What's happening, everybody? On today's show, the search for an Alabama offensive coordinator is on. We will run through some of the names as likely candidates. Kentucky cancels their spring game while Tennessee sets a date for theirs. A Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at lockedonsec.com. Let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws in. Around the conference. And we start over in Tuscaloosa as Alabama and Nick Saban are looking for their new offensive and defensive coordinator. But offensive coordinators grabbing the headlines this week. Of course, Pete Golding uh, departed for Ole Miss last week. Bill O'Brien leaving Tuscaloosa this week, heading back to the New England Patriots where he once coached. And that leaves Nick Saban looking for two coordinators on Wednesday morning Chris Lowe ESPN insider for the SEC joined Greg McElroy and Cole Kublik on their radio show on Jocks FM and talked about the offensive coordinator vacancy he said I bet you this is going to be pretty close to the vest because I would say a lot of guys Nick is going to be really interested in or has been interested in because I think he's already made some calls and talked to some people this O'Brien thing has been brewing for a while so a lot of these guys are going to have jobs a lot of them high profile jobs so this will probably be a pretty hush-hush search. One guy that's already been out there, a lot of people floating out his name, and I think he's on Nick's list, is Jeff Levy at Oklahoma. Again, this is Chris Lowe uh, sharing this information. He said, I think Auburn made a run at Jeff Levy as well. Dan Mullen is someone I talked to very close to the situation, and unless something changes dramatically, Dan's not going to be a candidate. He's really happy doing TV now. I think what Slade Nagel did down at Tulane, he's a guy to watch. Did a terrific job down there. Maybe Colin Klein at Kansas State. The guy at Duke is somebody they may look at. Greg Roman is a name. There will be others. Now, uh, to put a cap on that, Chris Lowe did say uh, Dan Mullen, talking with a lot of people around him, is not going to be a candidate for this job. Um, Dan Mullen really enjoying his TV football analyst job. <laughs> I guess a lot less pressure doing that. But a uh, good offensive mind, Dan Mullen. But Sounds like he'll keep doing the TV thing. Um, for the next offensive coordinator, four of the last five that have been in Alabama have used the job as a rebound. Bill O'Brien, Steve Sarkeesian, Mike Loxley, and Lane Kiffin. Three of the past four had most recently coached in the NFL, so that's something to keep in mind, too. Could Saban go to the NFL ranks to find his next OC? So who are some guys to watch for other than the names of Chris Lothar out there? Well, the Tuscaloosa News, they put out some candidates. First one's kind of interesting. How about Jason Garrett, former New York Giants offense coordinator and Dallas Cowboys head coach? Uh, Garrett coached quarterbacks with Saban way back in the day when Saban was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. So there's a connection there. Jason Garrett, another one like Dan Muller, though, doing TV. Seems to be pretty happy doing TV. See if he would consider it. Uh, Jeff Levy, the other one. Uh, and this is a name that a lot of people have garnered with, uh, you know, momentum and smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, worked under Lane Kiffin for two years at Ole Miss. Uh, the Rebels finished number three and number six in yards per game nationally when he was there. Ole Miss was also in the top 25 each year for points per game. And this past year with the Oklahoma Sooners, their offense finished number 33 in points per game and 13 in yards per game. And that was with quarterback injuries and all kinds of other stuff they were dealing with. So Jeff Levy is a name that makes a lot of sense. It was just in the SEC. He'd come right back into the SEC and be the OC at Bama. Another big name that people uh, have on the radar, Cliff Kingsbury, former Texas Tech head coach, most recently the Arizona Cardinals head coach. Fits in the right mold of fired former NFL college coach, just like Bill O'Brien. Uh, just got let go this month from the uh, Cardinals. So Cliff Kingsbury make a lot of sense. A few of the other names 
that the Tuscaloosa news threw out there. Greg Roman, he was the former Ravens offensive coordinator and uh, only had a brief stint in college coaching as the Stanford tight ends and offensive line coach over a decade ago. But uh, again, could use that coaching rehab work under Nick Saban. One that I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. How about Joe Brady? Buffalo Bills quarterbacks coach. Of course, he was at LSU in 2019 with that magical season with Joe Burrow. They beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And he's still young. He's only 33 years old. So Joe Brady, I think, would make a lot of sense. Bring some of those schemes that he had under Joe Burrow. Come tutor some of these young quarterbacks and surround them with that four- and five-star talent. And a few other names that were thrown out there. Nick Cayley, the tight ends coach up in New England. Very highly thought of under Bill Belichick. And then Freddie Kitchens, uh, South Carolina senior analyst, former Cleveland Browns coach. He was a grad assistant on Saban staff at LSU. Of course, a lot of ties to Alabama with him. So that is, uh, those are just some of the names that are being thrown out there. Of course, there could be some names off the radar as well. Uh, Jeff Scott was a name that was thrown out there, former Clemson offensive coordinator. Uh, he's, you know, looking for a job. So there's a lot of guys out there and, it does feel like this is a very important hire for Saban because, man, they are in a transition. They've known who their quarterback would be every year, really, since, you know, it was Jalen Hurts. And then they transitioned to Tua and then Mac Jones and then Bryce Young. And now it's who? Is it Jalen Milrow? Is it Ty Simpson? Is it one of the incoming freshmen? Whoever the OC is is going to have to figure this out very quickly and start molding that guy into a uh, SEC starting caliber quarterback. So it's going to be fascinating to watch this in the coming weeks to months over at Alabama. But uh, got to think that uh, Nick Saban is going to make a, a move here with spring ball right around the corner. Need to know C and need to DC. So I would expect some names to uh, be getting interviewed and possibly hired within the next couple of weeks. In other SEC news, Kentucky, they have announced – their schedule for spring practices and bad news for fans. The Wildcats will not have their traditional spring game format this year. Uh, Kentucky announced on social media, the decision is due to the turf being replaced at Kroger field. Wildcats will have their spring practice from March 6th to April 8th. But the statement said, because we're replacing the turf at Kroger field, we will not have that traditional spring game. We are working on having chances for big blue nation to see the team in person this spring. However, so we'll see uh, what they have in store for that. But no traditional uh, spring game this year for Kentucky. We've seen this at some other schools in recent years as well, doing uh, renovations to their stadiums. The Wildcats coming off a kind of a rough 7-6 and six record. Uh, did uh, lose in the Music City Bowl with Will Levis sitting out that game. But arrow pointing upward with NC State quarterback Devin Leary coming in. He talked to the media for the first time the other day and uh, – he is excited about the opportunity to come in and get to work with Liam Cohen and get that offense jump started again over at Kentucky. Meanwhile, Tennessee, they did not hold their annual orange and white game last spring due to the renovations going on at Neyland, but the school announced Wednesday their spring scrimmage will return this year, will be played at Neyland. Tennessee announced that this year's orange and white game will be held Saturday, April 15th. That'll be the chance to see your 11-win Vols for the first time with quarterback Joe Milton as the incumbent starter, taking over the end of the year with the injury to Hendon Hooker. And I'll see what the new-look offense looks like. But expectations continuing to rise on Rocky Top, and we'll see what uh, Josh Heupel and company can do in year three. But uh, circle that on your calendars, Vol, Vol fans. April 15th, Neyland Stadium, the orange and white game for Tennessee. Get to some more tidbits going on around the conference in just a second, including uh, some news on Stetson Bennett that coming your way in just a second. But this uh, episode is presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, the NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner with Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, and that is FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers can join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. 
FanDuel, they have all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. You can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. If you're a football fan, do not miss out. Go place your first $5 bet and get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And I know a lot of you SEC fans, we got you in all different states across the region. So um, if your state participates or not, you may want to go check it out at FanDuel.com slash locked on and go sign up today. Going along here, locked on SEC, and we got more we got to get into in news going on around the conference because um, Senior Bowl is coming up right around the corner. We'll be there and uh, grabbing some interviews with a lot of the former SEC guys. And one guy that was thought that he might be heading there was Stetson Bennett. He's reportedly having discussions with the reps at the Reese's Senior Bowl. Uh, he will not participate in the Senior Bowl. That coming from Outkicks Trey Wallace. Bennett had not been invited to the game, but Jim Nagy, the events director, said earlier this week they were looking to add him to the roster, but the two-time national champion uh, has probably worn the Georgia helmet for the last time. Well, and his career winning the uh, Manning Award this past week and, of course, uh, winning his second straight national championship and uh, we will hear Stetson Bennett's name likely called sometime in the NFL draft. Mel Kuyper said Wednesday he would not be surprised if Stetson Bennett heard his name called in the third round of this year's NFL draft. So be very interesting to see where he goes. But uh, we'll not finish off his career with the senior ball. I was kind of hoping that we would see him. But uh, more on SEC quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft coming up in just a little bit. Brian Kelly got uh, some double payments from his work. Has that ever happened to you where they pay you twice accidentally? Happened to Brian Kelly, and the school is going to enact an adjusted pay schedule to recoup the funds to the state of Louisiana. They paid him out to him, the coach, and his LLC. Report by the Louisiana Legislator, Legislative Auditor's Office noted the school began making supplemental payments to Kelly's LLC in May and continued to make supplemental payments to the coach directly, which resulted in monthly double payments until LSU became aware of the error in November. The Greater Baton Rouge Business Report said that the state auditors noted multiple errors related to his pay. School also misclassified nearly $6.7 million in severance payments as coaching salaries, benefits, and bonuses on his statement of revenues and expenses and omitted nearly $140 million in debt on its NCA financial report. So somebody needs to get in there and get the books fixed there for LSU. But uh, Brian Kelly, hey, man, we, we pay you too much. We're going to uh, deduct a lot of that in your coming month's pay. Just keep winning football games. Uh, there was another report that uh, Ross Dellinger had saying that LSU actually uh, made way more profit last year than they thought they would. So uh, school's doing well. They won the SEC West, so uh, <laughs> keep winning games, Brian Kelly. They'll keep paying you. Maybe they'll double your salary again. In other SEC news over at Ole Miss, uh, former Ole Miss safety Tysheem Johnson, he has announced he will play next season at Oregon. He had 78 tackles this past season. He was a two-year starter for the Rebels and uh, will have two years of eligibility remaining. He was a four-star recruit out of the Philadelphia era, area and uh, – He's head on up to the Northwest. He was named to the SEC's all-freshman team following the 2021 season. But Tysheem Johnson heading up to Oregon with several other SEC guys going to play for Dan Landing up there. Bo Nix, quarterback up there. A uh, former Texas A&M cornerback, Brian George, uh, has changed his mind about where he's going to be playing. He originally said he was going to be transferring to UCF, well, on Wednesday, Sam Kahn of The Athletic reported he is now going to University of Houston. He was a four-star JUCO player in a ms 2020 recruiting class out of the state of Florida. He was the number two JUCO corner in that class, three years at AM, played 11 games, 
had an interception and two pass breakups, but he will be heading to Houston, uh, which will now be in the Big 12. Over at South Carolina, analyst Stanton Weber is expected to become the special teams coordinator at Toledo. According to Football Scoop, Weber was a special teams analyst with the Gamecocks, spent the previous four seasons on the staff of his alma mater at Kansas State. According to his bio, he was a team captain as a senior at K-State in 2015. Over Tennessee, they are hiring former UConn staffer Andrew Goodman as their new director of football ops. That from On3 Sports, the former Penn State wide receiver, will replace Andrew Warsaw, who left for the associate athletic and football chief of staff job at USF. Andrew Goodman also served as a recruiting coordinator for Penn State after his playing days up there at Happy Valley. The Vols only played one bad game this year against South Carolina, but we're well within the hunt for the college football playoff all season. And, uh, of course, Josh Heupel just got his big payday. Uh, Danny White, athletic director, also got a new contract and a pay raise. So Andrew Goodman going to go head up there to be their new director of football ops. And, by the way, Josh Heupel getting that contract extension through January 2029. So let's take a look at the updated coaching salaries in the SEC. We got Nick Saban getting paid 11.7 million. He's the highest paid Kirby right behind him at 11.2. Brian Kelly at LSU, he is the third highest paid at nine and a half million right there with Jimbo Fisher as well. So that's your four highest paid coaches in the SEC. <clears throat> One of these things is not like the other Jimbo. Uh Josh Heupel, he is right behind those guys at nine million. Lane Kiffin also making nine million. Mark Stoops not far behind at 8.6 million. Billy Napier, just one year in at Florida, make it 7.2 million. Shane Beamer over at South Carolina make it six and a half million. And Hugh Freeze, newly hired Auburn coach, making six million. So those are all your uh, highest paid coaches in the SEC. And Josh Heupel putting himself right there in line, a fifth highest paid tie with Lane Kiffin in the conference. Coming up next here on Locked On SEC, we are going to run through Mel Kuyper's latest uh, first edition of his mock draft. We'll run through some of the SEC names he has going in the first round. That's coming your way in just a sec. <laughs> We're along here, locked on SEC, and Mel Kuyper put out his first edition of his round one mock draft for this upcoming NFL draft over at ESPN. So figured we'd touch on some of the big names he's got from the SEC slated to go in the first round. So let's take a look at it. Going number one overall, he has got not Will Anderson, but Jalen Carter. Georgia defensive lineman going number one overall to the Chicago Bears. There's been some talk about this after, you know, last year, Georgia D lineman goes number one overall. Uh, of course, Walker to the Jags. And now here we are a year later. It could be Jalen Carter going number one overall to the Bears. Again, this is January. A lot can change before the end of April and the draft. Then, uh, then he's got, well, he's got CJ Stroud from Ohio State going, going number two overall to the Texans. And then number three, we get a run of SEC players. He's got Will Anderson going to the Arizona Cardinals at number three overall. So Bryce Young still on the board. At number four overall, he's got Bryce Young from Alabama going to the Indianapolis Colts. Kind of an interesting dynamic there. If the Texans at two pass on Bryce Young, he would go to their SEC or uh, AFC South Phobe, the Colts. And they'll have to play Bryce Young every year. So it'll be fascinating to see who pass. If you pass on C.J. Stroud, do you get Bryce Young, vice versa? Coming to number five, how about Kentucky quarterback Will Levis, projected to go to the Seattle Seahawks. Now, that actually might be an interesting spot for him. He could go sit and maybe learn behind Geno Smith, develop for a year. Interesting spot there. At number nine, he has Anthony Richardson from Florida going to the Carolina Panthers. Now, that's one you wonder. You know, would Richardson immediately compete for the starting job there in Carolina? Is he ready for that? You have very raw talent. Some people still said they thought Richardson should have come back for another year at Florida, hone his skills a little bit more. 
But can't argue if he's going ninth overall in this year's draft, then it's the right decision for Anthony Richardson to come out. So we'll see. Then there's a little bit of a stretch of non-SEC players in Mel Kuyper's mock draft. You go all the way down to number 16. There's Broderick Jones, offensive lineman from Georgia, going to the Washington Commanders. Then down at number 20 overall, it's Byron Young, edge rusher from Tennessee, going to the Seahawks. Number 23 overall, it is Mississippi State corner Emmanuel Forbes, one of the best ball hawking DBs in the SEC. Ton of interceptions of him going to the Vikings, 23rd overall. Coming at number 27, friend of the show, Derek Hall, going to the Buffalo Bills. So the Auburn defensive end, sneaking into the back end of the first round. I like that. And then back end of the first, 30th pick overall, Brian Branch. Alabama defensive back going to the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, just kind of looking at this thing as a whole, a lot's going to change between now and the actual draft in April, but how about only three Alabama players going in the first round? <laughs> just we're not used to that. Georgia with two, and then uh, a Kentucky guy, a Florida guy, Tennessee guy, and Auburn guy, and Mississippi State guy. So that's – Mel Kuyper's first edition of his mock draft. A lot is going to change between now and the uh, actual NFL draft come end of April. But good to see the SEC well represented there with 10 guys projected to go in the first round. And we've become so accustomed to this. The SEC just uh, talent performs very well at the next level. And tons of first rounders and tons of draft picks, all very successful. Look at the NFL playoffs this weekend. Uh, Jalen Hurts, of course, started his career at Alabama. Joe Burrow finished his career at LSU. Both those guys starting for uh, Final Four NFL teams in the playoffs this weekend. So there you have it. That is the latest going on around the conference. We've got plenty more to get into as the week rolls along. We'll keep an eye on those Alabama coordinator spots and keep you guys up to date on the latest news with spring ball, transfer destinations, and much, much more. This has been Locked On SEC. Thank you guys again for making us your first listen every day. Now go check out our brand new podcast, the Locked On College Basketball Pod. Everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place. Here from some big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Shout out to Tennessee Vols beating Georgia by almost 30 uh, last night in Florida, putting it on South Carolina, winning by 21. Shout out to them. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked on SEC. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.